Embattled Qantas chairman Richard Goiter and new CEO Vanessa Hudson will be grilled for the first time at a Senate inquiry into the aviation industry. In a moment, I'll be joined by the Secretary of the Transport Workers Union. First, though, live in the studio, I'm joined by our senior political reporter, Trudy McIntosh. And Trudy, there are a lot of big issues to get through. What are we expecting? Well, Kieran, huge. There is huge issues that Qantas have just not answered. When, since Vanessa Hudson came in replacing Alan Joyce, we have not heard from her publicly. She hasn't had a press conference and answered questions. This will be the first opportunity then for the Senate to scrutinise both Vanessa Hudson and the new and the chairman in Richard Goiter will show you the big issues that are expected to dominate today. The first one, the future of Richard Goiter himself. There are calls from the union, pilots, uh, politicians for him to go as well and follow Alan Joyce. The ghost flights issue, that was the allegations from the competition watchdog that Qantas sold tickets for more than 8,000 flights that's already cancelled. We haven't heard from them on that. SAC staff, Qantas, this will be the first opportunity to address publicly that issue of the illegality of sacking more than 1,700 of its staff in the middle of the pandemic. Alan Joyce, we know, the, the former CEO, he's not going to appear at this inquiry until potentially he returns to the country in a number of months from now, likely to hear questions about the golden handshake and whether they're going to actually pare back some of those massive bonuses expected for Mr Joyce. So there's certainly a lot to get through. This potentially an option and an opportunity, Kieran, for the new Qantas leadership team to reset whether they can do that and emerge from what has been a huge PR storm for them in the last few weeks. Let's wait and see. Yeah, and a big time in, in aviation news. Earlier today, we heard from Qatar about their push to get more flights approved, which was knocked back. And they say they were shocked and surprised by the government decision to block them from being able to add 28 extra flights per week into so-called gateway cities. So the big airports in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth. They were grilled today not only on that, uh, but also that issue of the strip searching of passengers at the uh, Doha airport. Uh, a few years ago. They say that was never raised with them as a reason why their um, bid had been overturned. Take a look at some of the uh, fiery evidence. We don't think this decision fully takes into account the interests of Australians heading abroad who are today paying too much for their airfares. But for us as an airline, yes, we want to firm that we get granted the frequency. So it would still be possible if the government reviewed the decision yes. for you to we, have we, we, extra we, flights by this Christmas? Yes, we hope so. Did the Australian government raise the 30 October 2020 incident at Hamad International Airport? Not up to our knowledge. Nothing was raised for uh, Qatar Airways. There is um, a concern by the Australian women that uh, they fear that it will happen again. This was very much a one-off incident a very extreme incident. We've had nothing like it previously in our history. In the last hour, we've been hearing from the Virgin CEO, Jane Herdlicker. She has revealed the details of her conversations with the Prime Minister and Transport Minister Catherine King this year on this Qatar bid. She says she spoke to Catherine King back on January 20. She left that meeting, she says, with the very clear view that the government was about to tick off on Qatar's bid. She says on that basis, she did not raise this as an issue with the Prime Minister when she met him at the Australian Open in that very same month. She's admitted today that, in hindsight, she wished she'd been more aggressive in her lobbying of government. The minister also said that my Qantas counterpart, then Alan Joyce, had heard that her department was recommending negotiations with Qatar should commence, and he was not happy and had asked to speak with her. Nonetheless, I was left with the very clear impression the decision to proceed was very compelling and imminent. Senators, if anything, I regret that we did not lobby on this issue more actively and aggressively. The Virgin boss says in May she also spoke with Catherine King and that was the first time that this Doha strip searching incident was in, then raised. The question really, Kieran, is whether this is a reason that's been retrofitted to the decision to block Qatar's bid or whether it is actually the underpinning reason. Now, Virgin says they were not told about that initially in January and that was only then raised with them months later in May. 